The Gewehr 43 Kurtz, the best weapon in the entire game, let alone best gold order weapon in the entire game, is no longer available to buy. At least not for now. Sorry. But what is still here are weapons like the Hyde Model 35, the PPD 1929, and the Irma EMP 44, which itself is super underrated and one of the best Gold Order weapons that is still available. That being said, they're not here for long, and this video will give you reason to buy them. The Irma EMP 44 is a very unique SMG available for assault troop types in the Invasion of Normandy and Battle of Berlin campaigns for the Axis. Designed by the famous German weapons manufacturer, Irma Werke, or in its long form, uh, uh, Erfurter Maschinen und Werkzeugfabrik? I tried, dude. That also was the main producer of the famous MP40. In late 1942, however, this EMP was created as a replacement for the MP40. This was also partially as a result of the Primitive Waffen program, which essentially was a German order to create weapons that were as cheap as possible towards the latter stages of the war, and an attempt to imitate the qualities of the British Sten gun and the Soviet PPSH and PPS guns. It was a very simplified machine pistol, which could have also been manufactured with speed and in great numbers, yet such a crudely designed firearm, which had a stock made of literal pipes wielded together, was not approved by the German weapons agency. The Heeres Waffenamt. I think I nailed that one. And the army, the Wehrmacht, at the time. And only one batch produced for testing in early 1943 were made, with very few surviving today. It was rejected due to the fact that the STG-44 was already in production. Note that the STG was aiming to be a replacement of both the MP40 and the Car 98K bolt-action rifle. So, from the history we just talked about, which was expertly provided by our Discord server's resident historian, Pavel, we should be able to assume that in-game it performs better than most German SMGs in enlisted, but perhaps not as good as the STG, and it is very accurate to assume this. A hit power of 6.8 is higher than most other assault weapons in the game, and a rate of fire of 640 RPM is nothing to be sniffed at. Under 3 second reload time, low recoil both vertical and horizontal, and a great feed system. But what these stats leave out is the fact that this EMP44 has a dual feed mechanism, the same as is on the MP40-1, a former premium squad in the Berlin campaign. This is great because it actually means the reload speed is just 1.4 seconds for every magazine. By switching between them, we mean. So its stats are looking super promising, but how come nobody talks about it or uses this weapon then? Comparing it against the other German Axis SMGs though, we see where it lies in the pecking order. The assault rifles SDG-44, MP43 and MKB-42 are just a lot better than the Irma EMP because of much higher damage, much lower shot dispersion and even lower horizontal recoil. It's harder to control than vertical recoil. The Karali 39 M, MP717R, and even the Beretta M3840 rounds are SMGs I'd actually rate above the Irma EMP44 too. The Hungarian gun for damage and fire rate, the stolen PPSH for magazine size and fire rate, and the Italian weapon for the same reasons. In short, it's not the best weapon in the game, let alone the best German Axis SMG. Beyond that though, you're hard pressed to find any better free SMGs than the Irma EMP, as it's basically very decent in all areas. And even in high level games with high tier gear, it's still more than holds its own. It beats all early game Axis submachine guns, including the MP40, MP35-1, ZK383 and all the other Beretta variants. You can compare the statistics for yourself using Euthemia's public enlisted resource, and even test out all these gold weapons for yourself in-game using Starro's custom mod which he provided for this video. There'll be a link to both in the pinned comment below, but you won't be disappointed when you do check these. I promise you, no matter what you think of this, it's definitely a hugely underrated gun, and very unique to look at, operate and to fire with, and it just looks cool in that kill feed, being different from everyone else. It scores a flat out 7 out of 10 on my gold weapon leaderboard. It's put in the same vicinity as the BAR variants, the WAR and the FN model 1930, that I reviewed in my last gold order video, and places it in the top 9 battle pass weapons in the game that have ever existed. Now do you see why it's underrated? Though you may be better served if you get it early in the Normandy campaign, as there are worse SMGs in that campaign for a longer period of time than than in Berlin. Just a little tactical idea for you there. Next up is the Hyde Model 35, another submachine gun leaving the store in the coming days, but this time for the Allies, in the Invasion of Normandy campaign only, for now. Designed by George Hyde, the future creator of the famous M3 Grease gun in 1935, it was another weapon designed to be a competitor to an already established and mass-produced SMG, but this time to rival the Thompson SMG. Already a further development of the Hyde Model 33, it was tested by US forces between 1939 and 
1940, and was also used with a few different feed systems. The one we see in game is another dual feed mechanism, just like the EMP, but a box mag of 20 rounds rather than the 32 in the EMP. However, it was also known to be made with a triple 20 round magazine. I'll be honest with you, this weapon would be significantly higher in my rankings if it was a triple mag. It would also make it so unique and the only weapon in the entire game with that functionality. But alas, the snail god giveth and the snail god taketh away. And so did the American army in fact, as it rejected this hide due to its high production cost, even though it was reported to have a number of advantages over the Thompson. Mr. Hyde had already moved on to a better iteration soon after, the M2 Hyde, and the squad with this weapon was a reward for early backers of enlisted. A number around 90 or 100 were made of this, but fewer are left today. In game though, it comes with a not particularly quick, but equally not particularly slow of 590 shots per minute. And as said before, only a magazine, despite you getting dual feed of it, of just 20 rounds, which really isn't great. But it is still in the conversation of being decent because of its high damage on par with other Thompsons, and just a 2.2 second reload time for switching between the two dual feed mags. But how good is it compared to other US SMGs? And should you get it? Well, it's honestly not amazing. One of the best ways to describe it is literally a slower to fire Thompson with a lower magazine size. So you'd pick basically any and all in-game Thompsons over this, meaning it's not a top tier SMG even for the Western Allies faction. That being said though, I'd still pick it over the M3 grease gun due to higher fire rate and over the Sten gun due to lower shot dispersion and damage, over the Owen due to better sights and damage, and even, perhaps surprisingly, over the Lanchester due to higher damage, lower visual recoil, and even more predictable horizontal recoil, as per the recoil direction hidden statistic. The higher this statistic, the more the weapon recoils just to the right hand side, rather than spread out in any direction. I give this SMG a 5.7 out of 10 on my complete gold weapon leaderboard. It's comfortably in the bottom half of the list, so don't expect it to be great, especially as it's worse than the Soviet Degtier of PDM and the Japanese Type 1 SMG. It's more unique than anything. Interesting to see in the kill feed, interesting to use and show off, it would be useful to low to mid-level Normandy Allies players, but perhaps most attractively, it's going to be a great low battle rating gun when the campaigns merge, mostly because it does the same damage still of a Thompson whilst being worse in other areas, so that is something to note. They just spice up your loadouts, really. I mean, that's why I get them. Last up is the PPD-1929, a very, very strange Soviet assault gun, available in both the Battle of Moscow and Battle of Berlin campaigns, but weirdly only being removed in the Berlin side for now. The Moscow side will remain, likely until the next Battle Pass season, so you have a bit more time to get this one. Designed by the world-renowned weapon designer Vasily Degtyarev in 1929, which should have been obvious given the year 1929 literally in the name of it, it was developed in an unusual and interesting attempt to unify both the SMG, as in submachine gun, and LMG, light machine gun, class of weapons, being based on his DP-28 machine gun design to create this SMG, and made after the failure of the PPT-27, which happens to be used in a premium squad in the Moscow campaign. It uses German Mauser 7.63x25mm ammo, and only one prototype was made, but was rejected for being too complex both to manufacture and use, and was deemed overweight with too high of a fire rate. The Soviet engineers were just experimenting with this design. They weren't really creating anything for warfare as such, so there's no weapon that it lost out to during testing for mainstream production. Degtyarev did make a new SMG in 1932 though, which later became the PPD-34 that enlisted players all know and love, unless you're a Moscow Axis main. Help! The 1929's main selling point is its insane 1,100 shots per minute fire rate in game. That's as high as the PPSH itself. I guess they were right about the fire rate being too high. The same damage as well, but higher recoil and just a 44 round magazine, which in itself is still great, but if we're comparing it to the PPSH again, well, you just prefer the 71 rounds with a fire rate that high. It has a bit better shot dispersion than the other PPDs and PPSH, a slightly lower aim down sight speed, likely due to its attempt at being part LMG. And you may remember from previous weapons videos that I made, including the one on the top 30 weapons in the entire game that all machine guns have lower ADS speed in game because of higher weight. Though perhaps its most damning feature is no alternative reload speed. For those 
those unaware, the alternative reload speed is a hidden statistic referring to a different, quicker reload speed if weapons still have some ammo in the magazine unspent at the time of reloading. Most weapons have this feature, but many big drum mags don't, like the LAD and this PPD-1929, meaning every time you reload it, you will have to suffer through the whole four seconds of reload time. Now, I know I've just made this weapon sound awful to you in the last few minutes, but that's only because I'm comparing it to all the amazing top-tier Soviet assault weapons that litter the game. They basically don't have any bad SMGs at all, so in relation to them, this looks worse. But put it this way, if it was an American weapon, and in the Western Allies tech tree, it would be one of the best SMGs for Western Allies immediately. But it's Soviet. I mean, I'd put it above both the PPS-42 and 43 variants, and the PPD-34, but that's where we stop in terms of free campaign unlocks. Once again, it's a great weapon, and very unique historically, but in game, it's just a bit less interesting compared to what you can already get for free just by playing the game and grinding. And I think a very respectable score of 6.5 out of 10, despite all my hate on it, on the leaderboard proves this. It's unique, don't get me wrong, and one for the collectors out there, but just don't expect to be blown away if you are going to stick it with the rest of your Soviet stuff. We've just gone through three gold order weapons from Battle Pass Season 4 that are disappearing from the store, but the RMN-50, the wacky Soviet hand artillery gun from Battle Pass Season 3, is also disappearing at the same time as the previous three in the Battle for Moscow campaign. I made a video on its last Battle Pass season when it was being removed from Berlin, so go watch that one for more details, because it is really insane. But in short, I'd recommend getting it because it's so unique. There are also other weapons in Battle Pass Season 4 that are not disappearing yet though, like the VMP 1926, which I have already reviewed in its own dedicated video because it is perhaps even more underrated than the Irma EMP. The VSA Model 1929 Thompson was also from Season 4 of the Battle Pass and is not being removed yet, but equally not one I've reviewed yet. And it is better than you think. Better than the hide, anyway. It was a new and improved version of the BSA Model 1926, where BSA is the Birmingham Small Arms Company, something non-gun enthusiasts may have heard of if they've watched the Peaky Blinders series, as they had a factory in Small Heath, where Tommy Shelby and his family thrived. John Thompson, the father of all Tommy guns, designed this model differently, as it was made to be a European variant, so it was also chambered for several different calibers to try and raise interest in continental Europe for export sales. Bergman, Parabellum, a CP and Mauser were all used. The 1926 version had testing by the French government but was never adopted, and the improved 1929 model was made in very, very small quantities, 10 to 15 as an estimate, and less than half of those remain today. In game, it's in many ways the same as the Hyde Model 35, with the same damage and magazine size, but it is not dual fed, yet compensated by a much higher fire rate, lower horizontal recoil, lower reload time, and a lot lower shot dispersion. All of these actually make it very good, but likely you didn't know how good because most of these improvements are in hidden stats. It's better than the hide by some distance, and very close to some of the best Thompsons in the game. If only it had a larger magazine, this thing would be better than the best free Thompson in the campaign trees, in my opinion. Because of this, it gets a very respectable 6.7 out of 10, just below the Irma EMP44, and BAR variants because of their higher damage, lower shot dispersion, and lower reload time. I bet you weren't expecting this one to be another underrated gold weapon in the same video. It is excellent if you are a low campaign level, as this could be the first Thompson you get and you can use it from level 1. And as a British man myself, who has indeed been to Small Heath, I feel inclined to buy one. But you probably should get this too, by order of the peaky blinders. My full gold weapon leaderboard is on screen now to help you decide which ones you want to buy. Remember that I change the scores in this table every single video I make in the gold weapon review playlist, as the meta changes with adding all these new guns. If you want to keep binging content though, then here's the previous gold order review on the first machine gun battle pass weapons which you do need to get, I can't lie, they are really cool and OP. Special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube channel members on screen including Kitsune Lord 91 Vertix, Ecolo QE, Narfalex and and Hilpster.